Joining me now is Dorian Johnson, the young man who was with Michael Brown and his attorney, Freeman Bosley Jr. Thank you both for being here. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, thank you. Dorian, you say the officer attacked Michael. What do you think when you hear the police say it was the other way around? I, I, knew, I knew as soon as I heard it that that is not what happened there. And I knew that I was standing so close and seeing everything so vivid that I know exactly what happened. I knew that was incorrect at the moment I heard it. How, how fast did all this happen? It, it, it really escalated quickly. It, is, it was really less than a minute or a minute or so before it escalated to death. Now, it's, where did it start? I mean, how did this start? Uh, we were walking down the street. Uh, at the time, there was no traffic coming. The street was clear. We were walking down the street in the middle of the street. And before, we, uh, before the officer pulls up, the, the traffic starts to flow. Uh, no cars blowing their horn at us like we're in their way or they're making uh, odd turns like they got to get out of our way or anything like that. So we didn't feel like we was uh, causing a problem to anyone. And we kept walking. So uh, a little bit later, we see the uh, police officer coming. And when he gets to the side of us, right on the side, where we can, uh, we right at his driver door, he tells us to get off, just get on the sidewalk in a real aggressive manner. I don't want to, uh, pardon, I don't want to cuss on camera, but he tell us to get on the sidewalk get the and F. get the F on the sidewalk. Yeah. And at that time, my friend Big Mike didn't speak at all. I responded to the officer. I said, officer, we're less than a minute away from our destination. We just walk in and we'll be out of the way. And we continue to walk because I was under the impression that the officer, you know, he was finna drive off. But then uh, we, hear the, uh, we hear the car stop and we hear it reverse, but it, it reversed very uh, rapidly. Like he, can't, he stumped on the gas pedal fast and he reversed in a manner where we had to kind of jump out the way, not really jump, but trying to step back out the way or he was gonna hit us. And now his car is slanted and we back face to face with him at, the, uh, at his driver door. And now you, you, said, this, when he, you said Michael's hands Go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Mike's hands are filled with uh, cigarellos because we, we have cigarellos in our hands. So his hands are filled. His hands are not free. His hands are filled. Uh, at that time, when the officer pulled up on us, he, uh, he was so close to us and he tried to push his door open so aggressively. Now, my, my friend Big Mike, he's a real big guy. You know, I'm not that big, but he's real big, and we're standing so close to each other that when he pushed the door open, it didn't get a full inch out, and it hit us and bounced back on him. And it's almost in an instant, his arm came out the window and grabbed my friend around the neck. You, you said that, the, that the door hit him, and then the door bounced back? Yes, the door ricocheted off our bodies, not that like we had our hands up, because we didn't know how, we didn't, we wasn't ready for the speed that he opened his door. So it wasn't like we braced ourselves. It could have, it almost knocked the wind out of me, but you know, he's so big that it, it slightly tapped me, it morally hit him, and it really bounced back on the officer. And then the and he, uh, incident happened. Yeah, uh, after the door bounced back on him, like I said, it's almost in an instant, his, uh, his left arm comes out the window. Uh, he's grabbing, he didn't, he didn't at no point in time try to get back out the car or open back the door. He just stuck his arm, his left arm out the window and grabbed my friend around the throat. And now my friend, he's angry. He, he has a frowny face, but, but my friend is not an aggressive person. So he's not uh, trying to go with the officer. He's pulling away with the, uh, pulling away from the officer. And uh, the officer is pulling him in the vehicle like he's trying to pull him through the window. And it, he never, he's so big, is he couldn't pull his body down into the window. So it was more like his body was coming into the window while the, while the officer was pulling on him. And while they was pulling, he managed to turn around, get loose the officer's grip from his neck, and now the officer's trying to still maintain his hold and grip on him. So now he's grabbing on his shirt and his arm, still with, the, still with his one arm, 
his left arm, he's trying to grab any grip he can on my friend. And he's turning around. Now, at this moment, he hands me the cigarillos like he says to me, hold these. And I grab them out of his hands. And I'm still standing in the, uh, the door right while they're doing all of this, uh, this tugging and pulling, not wrestling, as they say. It was more like tug and pull because he's trying to pull Big Mike, my friend, and my friend's trying to pull away because we, we really don't understand the manner the uh, officer address, addressing us. And at that time, I hear the officer saying, I'm a shoot. And when he says, I'm a shoot, my eyes addressed to him because I wanted to see what he was going to fire. And I know what a taser looks like, a taser gun looks like, and I know what a regular gun looks like. And when I looked at the officer, I was staring dead in front of the barrel. And almost a second later, the gun went off. If I didn't move of hesitation before the gun went off, I could have been shot as well as my friend, but I moved a second earlier than the, the gun pulling, the gun going off. And the bullet did strike my friend. He was never inside the car when the uh, bullet struck him. Cause we was, at this moment, when, when he pointed the gun at us, it kind of stood us back like he has a gun pointed at us for no reason. And he still has his hand on my friend Mike the whole time. He never let his grip go with his left hand. But now he's pointed his weapon at us in a threatening manner. At no time of the altercation did my friend Big Mike make a, a verbal threat at the officer. No time did I make a, a movement or gesture like I was going to uh, jump in in the altercation. Uh, no time that I felt like the officer life was really in that much danger for him to pull out the gun first before any other uh, weapon that he had to stop what was going on. So after the first shot went off, I stepped back and I look at my friend and I see the blood coming down his right arm. So I know that he was hit. And when I see him, my eyes get big. He look at me because he didn't even look at himself because he in shock. We both in shock from hearing a gun so close that he looking at me and I'm looking at him and he see my eyes get big and the officer let go. And that's how we were both able to run at the same time because it's almost like the officer didn't mean to shoot him, but he was trying to stop us from committing no crime at all. I don't know what we were doing for him to pull out his gun, but when he shot, he let my friend go and we took off running. Now, at this time for the first shot take off, the, his vehicle is uh, parked at a way that both lanes are taken up. No cars can get past, north or south. His three vehicles parked right in front of the scene. As we run it, I step behind the first vehicle and stoop slightly. I could tell the officer was in shock because it took him at least two or three minutes before he initially got out the car after the first shot. It was almost like he had to make a judgment call or think about what he had just done or just saw. And while I'm stooped down behind the uh, vehicle, my friend Big Mike's run past me. He, he sees me in plain sight. He looks down at me and say, keep running, bro, verbatim in his exact words. And he's still running. I'm still in shock, so my body, it, it can't, I can't move, but my mind is trying to run, but my body can't move. By this time, the officer is out the car now, and I'm standing, I'm standing up now, and the officer is walking with his gun drawn, but it's almost like he couldn't see me because I'm just standing right, right, it's still in plain sight, but he's walking in, in such a way that he, his vision wasn't even on nobody else but uh, what he was trying to do. And as he got closer, he fired one more shot. That shot struck my friend in the back. He then stopped what he was going and stopped to turn around with his hands in the air and started to uh, tell the officer that he was unarmed and he was not. And before he can get his last words out, the officer then fired several more shots and my friend went down in the fatal position. And that's when I took off running. Now, did your friend say anything to the policeman when he stopped and put his arms up? He did. He started to uh, tell. He started to talk to the police officer, but he couldn't fully get what he was saying out because he was being shot several more times in a, in mid talk in mid sentence. Miss Attorney Bosley, uh, 
you represent Dorian, and I know that uh, he has already started talking uh, to the U.S. Attorney's Office. This seems as though federal investigators are already seriously involved in investigating, at least at a preliminary level, uh, this case in a serious manner. Yeah, we met with the uh, FBI earlier today, uh, although. Uh, Mr. Johnson was not able to uh, meet with us. Uh, there were several other key witnesses that did get a chance to uh, meet with the FBI and tell their story. Uh, Mr. Uh, Johnson is going to be available later on to be able to do that. Uh, one of the things that is just so disappointing about this is that we've got a uh, situation in which this, this community here... Uh, just speak up there. Okay, we've got a situation in which this community uh, is insensitive to what happens to young African-American males. What has occurred here to Big Mike, with Big Mike is just another indication of what goes on around here. We've got two other people that have been killed. We've got a guy named Carrie Ball who got shot 27 times by the police. Officer stood over and actually fired seven to ten shots into his body while he lays on the ground. We've got another case involving a gentleman by the name of Antonio Johnson who was tased 13 times by the police in two minutes uh, in the city of Hazelwood. He died the next day. Uh, this situation with Big Mike is just more of the same. And we're so glad, uh, Reverend Sharpton, that you and the national media have decided to focus on the city of St. Louis and what goes on here, because this is critically important to us. Well, we're going to stay on this story. I assure you and Dorian, Attorney Bosley, uh, we're going to follow this story all the way through. Dorian Johnson and Freeman Bosley Jr., thank you for being here again. Mr. Johnson has not told his story directly, but he will, his attorney has announced here tonight. Thank you yes. both for being yes. with me tonight. We'll be right back. You're welcome.